Hello, my name is Ralph Dignazio, and this is my audio implementation demo using FMOD Studio. The scope of this project was replacement of all of the audio assets for a complete working level in Cube 2, Sauerbraten. I started off choosing a level with dark, threatening skies, which is adorned with ancient ruins and burning torches. I then connected to the game with FMOD Studio to find which audio assets were triggering within the level and created a comprehensive asset list that I could follow throughout the project. Following this, I edited the map, first adding monsters to hidden crevices, caves, waterways, and ominous stone buildings to make sure the player was met with ample challenge. Then I placed item pickups in strategic locations to help the player advance through the map. Cube 2 has lots of options for entity placement. These guys are hanging out in the water just waiting for an opportunity. I always strive to create original sound effects and monsters always offer a unique challenge. I set up a logic session with phase distortion, EQ, and formant pitch shifting, which I used as a base for all of the monster sounds to keep a unified palette. For the goblin, as I vocalized screams, I let the air out of a stretched balloon which blended well as a distinct cry. For the slith, I tried to emulate the sound of a locust, also using my own voice. Ah, my favorite, the ogres. In trying to achieve an organic sound, I gargled water while growling, which I assure you is no easy task. And as for the rats, since I lost my speaking voice after the ogre session, I used some processed animal sounds. The player in Cube 2 has access to several weapons, all of which I wanted to sound huge within the game. I worked hard to get permission from a local gun range to let me do a recording session. From the session I was able to create the pistol sound and add extra punch to the minigun and shotgun assets, and I took spent ammo casings with me to later create shell dropping sounds. Along with the punch of a 45 Magnum, I used some common household items to build the minigun sound. And for the whine of the motor and the shutdown sound, I used an old vacuum cleaner. Each individual asset has to be auditioned and adjusted within FMOD along the way. I was fortunate enough to procure a gas chainsaw from a friend, which made for an infinitely fun session. I built the grenade launcher's distinct sound using library and foley sounds, which included launch, bounce, and explosion assets. I wanted to use a jet flyover for the rocket launcher, so I looked up arriving flights and headed to a local park that's underneath Final Approach. After all of my careful planning, I got the recording. But the cameraman got thirsty. I added falling debris sounds to the explosions to help immerse the player in his environment. 
And in the end, I didn't end up using the jet sound. Rather, I found taping a mic inside a PVC pipe and dragging it on concrete made for a great ear disturbing sound. Although the ogres didn't really appreciate my efforts. And they really didn't appreciate the incessant in-game weapon trials. For each of the weapon assets, I used multiple sounds and randomization in FMOD to ensure a varied game experience. Since I previously wrote music for the first Cube game, I treated Sarah Broughton as a sequel, wanting to keep a familiar feel for the player. I created an open tuning for guitar using notes from the original score, and played harmonics in an odd time signature for the foundation. I also added some interesting percussive material using a handmade instrument, and kept with a similar instrumentation, twisting and inverting musical lines to hint at the original score. Using original instruments and extended techniques always helped to set the music apart from other projects. In the end, I wrote and recorded a 5 section, 16 track score specifically for this project. I used innovative tools within FMOD Studio to make the music adaptive to gameplay. Here are my 5 sections of music, and one of the game parameters available was the monsters left parameter, which translates to the percentage of monsters left on the map. To help create a more immersive experience for the player, I set up the music in the following way. Section A begins and loops until 20% of the monsters are eliminated, and at that point, transitions to Section B. So you'll see here, Section A is going along, and as long as the monster percentage is under 20%, it'll loop back and start over. You can see here the transition to section B. Now as I raise the monster percentage above 20%, it jumps to section B as the music becomes more tense with the introduction of the double bass line. Now if the monster percentage jumps above 40%, it moves on to section C where a choir is added. Above 60% brings you to section D, where I bring in percussive elements and a viola melody. And above 80% brings you to the final section E. In addition to the music, I hired in an actress to record replacement in-game vocal alerts. I wrote an original text that reflected the map theme and planned to use it in an innovative way in the game. As the pungent, heavy air 
suffocates all that breathe, and the dark, stagnant water stains the still shoreline. Another parameter available is based on the player's health, also represented by a percentage. And originally, the game was set to gradually introduce a low-pass filter to the music as health depleted and the player got closer to death. I used the parameter in a very different way, wherein the spoken text would gradually raise in volume as health decreases. As we'll hear in this case, as I adjust the parameter knob and decrease health, the speech bleeds in and becomes louder. And as the player attains more health, the voices go away. What you'll hear in this gameplay example is the music advancing as monsters are eliminated and, simultaneously, the spoken text becomes evident as the player sustains serious damage. After all implementation was complete, I used FMOD's innovative in-game mixing console to create a balanced experience for the player. With this function, I'm actually able to connect to the game through FMOD and have the game playing in the background while I mix the sounds in real time. When all is said and done, the game comes together as a cohesive, dynamic world where the player is left alone to survive or perish. I'd like to say a special thanks to Leonard Paul for all of his help and direction.